Okay, this is Manesh Bakshi and welcome to the webinar on dynamic communication, increasing communication through understanding behaviors. Now, you may already know much, a little bit about me. I'm the author of the book, Stop Hiring Losers, and one of the tools I use during the hiring and team development process is called DISC Assessment from a company called TTI, which is Target Training International. And DISC is what we are going to cover today. That will be our main focus. If at any time you have any questions, just chat, uh, send a question in the chat, and I'll make sure that I cover the information for you. And then you'll have the recording available for listening to it and watching it again so that you can go over the material that's important for you. More important also, that you can use it with the training of your team as well. So thanks for being on the program. I really appreciate it. This is a 60-minute program. We will cover most of the material within the first 15 minutes or less, and then the rest will be open to any questions you might have. So if there are a lot of questions, we'll just end it around one hour. If not, then we'll end a little sooner. So anyway, my name is Manesh Bakshi, and I'm excited about sharing with you the ideas that can dramatically improve your communication. So why should we study this? Because the main thing we all say is, hey, communication is a problem. Why haven't we solved our communication problems? The answer is very simple. We don't understand ourselves, and then we don't understand other people. And we are usually thinking about us before we are communicating with other people, instead of thinking about them while we are communicating with them. So the first step is understanding yourself. Dynamic communication was designed to help people win and to achieve a greater degree of success in life and work. Achievers throughout history have had one thing in common, they know themselves. Achievers don't underestimate what they can do, they don't sell themselves short, they know their own limitations and by realizing their weaknesses are able to develop plans to overcome their shortcomings and take full advantage of their strengths. And also let me add that if you know your weakness, and you're building a team of people around you, you can actually make sure that the people you are hiring and the people that are going to be part of your team are the people that will supplement your strengths and complement your weaknesses. That way you have a well-rounded team. So here is the question that is easy enough for us to answer. Have you ever been mismanaged? And if so, what effect did it have on your personal productivity and the quality of your work? What effect did it have on your personal energy level, that is frustration, family life, etc.? And if continued over an extended period of time, what did you do about it? Here is where I want to share a quick story about myself. The reason I wrote the book Stop Hiring Losers was because I wanted people to really understand when they're hiring they can create a winning team or a losing team. Now, you may have any team that's a favorite of yours, whether it is in football, basketball, or any other sports which is a team sport, and you can ask yourself, okay, why is one team winning and the other is not? The first thing is always going to be you have to recruit very high quality caliber players. So, for example, LeBron James is a very well-known player, he was with Cleveland Cavaliers before, but never won any championships. He went to Miami Heat, and he did. Now, did the player change? No. In Miami Heat, they had enough players who complemented his strength so that they could actually win the championship there. On the other hand, at Cleveland Cavaliers, they didn't have enough people surrounding him to support. So when you are creating a team, you're building a team, you want to make sure you have people who are right for the position. So you may know that I'm five feet four, I don't really move very fast, I'm not athletic, athletically built. So if you're looking to put together a basketball team, I will not be the person that you would be looking for. So in terms of actually the process, I would not be a winner for you, I would be a loser for you. So the loser word isn't really about loser in life, it's about when you have a person who is not going to be a good fit, who doesn't really help you win the championship, so to speak, you obviously have losers. And that is the reason I wrote the book, Stop Hiring Losers. I'll give you my own experience about how I look at it. 
my background, some of you may know, I have a bachelor's in electrical engineering and a master's degree in systems engineering and management. I was a computer programmer for 12 years. And though I enjoyed what I learned in my college days, but the part of doing that for eight hours a day did not appeal to me. And that is the reason why in those 12 years, I wasn't as happy an employee, nor as productive as I could have been. Why? Because I was mismanaged. What, this, what does mismanage mean here? They did not know my strengths, and they did not know my weaknesses. And the role that they gave me wasn't exactly what was suitable for me. So I hope you understand that when I'm talking about stop hiring losers, I'm not talking a person being a loser. I'm talking about a person not really being fit in the position that the person is supposed to be fulfilling, and hence doesn't really help create the team in a winning spirit, in a winning um, way, as you can imagine. And that is why what I do today, which includes a lot more of being in front of people, talking to people with more flexibility, is a lot more enjoyable for me and I'm much more productive than I've ever been because this is more suitable for my program, my role, and what I really like to do. So I hope you understand Stop Hiring Losers is all about making sure the right person is in the right position. Again, feel free to uh, put any questions in place, okay? And uh, if you have, I see Mike, you might have a question, so let me just see um, if I have answered your question here. Um, anyway. Mike, uh, can you send me your question again? It looks like somehow the question is not um, clearly seen, being seen here for me. Okay. Anyway, I'll continue here, and then later on you can send another question later. Okay. So let me go over some more information for you. <clears throat> so now let's talk about, and again, here are a couple of examples and quotes for you. Success in the knowledge economy comes to those who, have, who know themselves, their strengths, their values, and how they best perform. That is Peter Drucker, very well-known management consultant. Joel Barker says, our old strengths offer little protection against the new world, which basically means we need to learn to adapt. So in this seminar, this is the key. You will know the benefits of applying a behavioral model. You will understand your own behavioral design. You will recognize, understand, and appreciate others' behavioral designs. Adapt for enhanced communication, understanding, and relationships. People read all four factors. Now here is the fun part. This is what I really like everybody to pay attention to. Tone of voice is very important and useful in recognizing the behavior style of the other people. Body language, which is how they move. Words, okay, so you'll find out about that too. And pace, pace is the speed with which they speak, move, etc. Now William Moulton Marston is the father of the DISC model. And this is from his book, Emotions of Normal People. Now an interesting trivia about William Marston is he is also the creator of the character The Wonder Woman. Some of you may have heard of that uh, or watched the TV show which was very popular I guess in the 70s I guess, maybe 60s, I don't even know. But anyway, the bottom line is that Wonder Woman was a very popular show and he is the creator of that particular character. Okay, so four dimensions of normal behavior. So these are the four areas we will be covering today. So let's go over that very simply. There are four factors, D, I, S, and C. Now dominance, which is the D factor, answers the question, how you handle problems and challenges. Influencing, or I factor, is how you handle people and influence others. Steadiness is how you handle change and face yourself. Compliance, which is a C factor, how you handle rules and procedures set by others. And we'll cover a lot more in detail about this, so let me just jump through the part here. Okay? The behavioral model is simply about how. Okay? It's not about why, which is a different program, a different assessment, which I use called workplace motivators. This one tells me how. How you walk, talk, shop, drive, and play is the language, language of people watching. So it's not very complicated if you are paying attention. So when somebody walks into your office, you can notice how they walk, 
how they talk. Okay, you can hear their words and find out what kind of tonality are they using. Are they loud, soft, slow? All of these can be observed. So what I'm going to teach you today, you can apply right now. As soon as you complete the program today, you will be able to find ways to understand your clients, your employees, your colleagues, uh, the referral partners that you might be working with, people at home. And those are easy ways to connect with people. So you can read and know all four factors of a person's behavior and design just through observing or listening. You don't need a PhD. You don't need to go through some strange courses or anything like that. Just pay attention. If you pay attention, you will learn that. OK, so let's talk about the behavioral PowerPoints. I will cover that. And the quote at the bottom, as you can see, is Stephen Covey, the very famous book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it's a phenomenal book. Everybody should read the book. It is what he says. We see the world not as it is, but as we are. Let me repeat that. We see the world not as it is, but as we are. Very critical to know that because we are projecting all the time in our world. So people are fast for us or slow for us. People are kind, people are unkind. It's based on our frame of reference. So what is this? This is the doorway to communication. The uniqueness of each person extends far beyond the DISC model. So the, therefore, behavioral models should not be referred to as personality tests. I know some people call them tests. They really are not tests. Nobody is going to be uh, passing or failing a test here. This is simply about awareness of your strengths and weaknesses. Again, we don't want to be pigeonholing people. Everybody has the potential to be a winner. I mentioned that before. It depends on the role they are playing. Okay, And we'll talk about the highs and lows of all four factors. Some of you may already know the high D, high I kind of personality style, etc. And we all can adapt. Now, this is something which is not very difficult. If you talk to somebody and your client needs the information in a certain manner, you can learn to adapt to their style. doesn't matter what your style is. And this can be a conscious decision. As some of you have learned about matching and mirroring, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. You can match somebody's tone of voice, and you will find that you have built a rapport. So what is all of this communication about? If you are able to communicate effectively with an individual, you can achieve more than you would otherwise. Okay. So for example, if you want somebody to sign up with you, sell them on an idea, or you want them to do certain specific things, if you use this model and adapt yourself, learn the way that you need to communicate with that individual, you will get a lot better response than you would have gotten otherwise. So that is the reason why this is very useful and can be adopted right away. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to go through a little bit more of the reading of the graph later and just explain to you the concept here. But there is there are basically two graphs, graph 1 and graph 2. So if you have looked at your own profile, the graph 1 and graph 2 come later near the end. Graph 1 is what others expect of you. This is, again, as we said, we project. So this is what you think other people are looking for. And graph 2 is you, how you respond to pressure. And based on the numbers, you can see. So if your number for D is over 50, then somebody would call yourself a high D. If your number is over 50 for I, you'd be calling yourself a high I, etc. And what those really mean, we will cover that in a few moments. So here is the bottom line about graph 1 and graph 2. When a person is under stress, pressure, or fatigue, they will usually move from graph 1 behavior to graph 2 behavior, and the mask or game face will come off, which means graph 2 is the real you. And that's what you want to have graph 1 and graph 2 to be as close, as similar as possible. Let's talk about D, general characteristics. Very critical, very easy to understand here. I will, I will not read every single point here. You can read that and watch this later as well. Here is the bottom line. A D, high dominance kind of person, is very direct, very adventuresome, ambitious, and can be very impatient. They focus on results. 
Now, what is their value? They want to make things happen. That's the simplest way of knowing a D. A D wants to make things happen with a sense of urgency. And that is important. Every team which has a requirement to achieve certain results will benefit from having a person who has high D. Quite often, they want to be the leader of the team. Now, if they don't have the skills, they may not be good leaders. They may just be bossy, which is not the same as being a leader and effective one. Ideal environment is they want to be on their own. They want to have challenges. They want to make sure it's not the same old, same old every single day. Okay? But they're not easy to work with because they can be demanding, aggressive. And also, they talk about me, me, me a lot. So that's why they may use their position a little too much. Their standards too high. Totally lack tact and diplomacy. They are confrontational. They take on too much too soon, too fast. The emotion is anger. So if you see anger in somebody a lot more, the potential for them to be a D, a high D, is very high. So let's go to the I, which is influencing. This is, in a simple way, warm, bubbly, friendly, center of the life, the attention party, whatever you want to call that. Okay? They love getting attention. They are what I would call very selective in listening. They are overly... Uh, unrealistic. So if you say, hey, can you get it done by today? They'll say, absolutely. Well, it might take a week, but they think it can be done in a day. So that unrealistic expectations are not very useful. But because they bring organized optimism and enthusiasm, they're great people to have on your team. They're the perfect people to have at your events to make everybody feel comfortable, enjoy the party, and just have fun. They're also team player, by the way. The ideal environment, they love to be in touch with people. So don't put them in a cubicle somewhere in a corner, okay? They also like flexibility. And they want to be heard. They want to be, they are verbal people. So they like to talk. But they can be self-promoting, overly optimistic, unrealistic. So again, the limitations are very simple. Inattentive to details. Oh, I can get it done, except they may not. Be unrealistic in appraising people. Oh, I'm sure she can do it. Well, they may not trust people indiscriminately and situational listeners. So they may not have listened to the whole information, but they come to a conclusion relatively quickly. The emotion is optimism, which means, hey, we can get it done. Now that's like a cheerleader, okay? So that's great, and it's good to have somebody on your team like that to keep the teams motivated, excited, and just feeling good. The next one is set, S, steadiness. So this is the person who doesn't like change. They don't like confrontation. They are great loyal team players, and they want everybody to get along, okay? And they don't show a lot of emotion, by the way, okay? So that's why the emotion of the high S is non-emotional. Their value is what? They're dependable team leader working together with a leader on a cause, and they are logical and service-oriented. So if you want somebody to really take great care of your client, if you want somebody to take great care of your team, this is the quality you must look for because high S are very service oriented, okay? Uh, and I'll give some examples later on, but you can imagine the people who go into certain types of businesses, they are high S because they love serving people. And that's why, that's why they do what they do. What they want is a stable and predictable environment. Not much change, right? They don't like conflict either. So you must be aware of that when you're working with these people in your environment. Now, we'll talk about how to recognize these people in your environment. So hang on for a few more minutes. We'll talk about that. Again, the possible limitations is they do not have a way to establish priority. So if you give somebody who is an S any task to do, make sure you give them the list and the priorities in the proper order. Otherwise, they might spend too much time on something that is irrelevant to your main goal. They don't like change too much and they have difficulty dealing with diverse situations. Let's go to the C part of it, compliance. These are what you would call analytical people, okay? These are the ones who have attention to detail, and they want to make sure they're following the procedures, the rules, exactly as prescribed. And you do need some of those people because depending on your business, for example, mortgage and real estate, you want to make sure the rules and procedures are being followed, otherwise you might have difficulty. And you may find out problems later because somebody did not pay attention to detail. That's not a good place to be, okay? 
and these people also maintain high standards, but they are more a task person rather than the people person. So you want to remember that. The D is more a result person, I and S are more people person, and C is more a task person. So this is not the person who is going to be warm, bubbly, friendly for you. In fact, it will sound very monotonous. We'll talk about that also. So wherever critical thinking is required, technical work is required, they will be good people to have on your team. Now they do tend to be pessimistic. So if they are always talking negatively, it's not because that uh, you know they are being bad people or anything like that, but they have a tendency to look on the downside because what drives them, the emotion is fear. They can be very defensive and criticized, and so you have to be careful on how you criticize these people. They can get bogged down in details, etc. And they also can come across aloof and cool. So let's look at some examples of people you might know in your environment and celebrities as well that are D, I, S, or C. So anybody wants to mention any personality that you know, okay, that uh, uh, that you would like to mention is a B or an I or an S or a C. Now you could be one of those. <laughs> okay, and that obviously is going to be the case as well. Uh, but who do you know is either a D, I, or S or an I, uh, C. So you would be, you can do that. And I think that's not that difficult to do once you understand that, like for example, if you think of, mm, I would say Bill Clinton, the first thing I would think of is I, because he always comes across with a smile, and he's very interested in just being warm and friendly. Okay, so that's a president for you who is sounding across as I. Okay, and some of these people, if they are actors, it's a little harder because their roles determine who they are. So their role might be kind of opposite to who their behavior style, what their behavior style might be. But if you look at them at on a red carpet, Golden Globe Awards, and somewhere you will see the natural style come across. For example, Joan Rivers can be a combination of D and I. By the way, I know some of you may already know that uh, she passed away, I think, recently. <coughs> okay, so if you think of people, uh, for example, George H.W. Bush was the president before uh, you know, Bill Clinton, he would come across as steadiness because he uses very soft voice and uh, rocket scientists would typically be compliant dominance are people who are leaders. So think of people in the military in general, they would quite often be a D as well. So if you think of general pattern, I'm sure you'll be thinking of a D. And that's to give you a quick idea on uh, D, I, S, C. Let's keep moving along here. Okay, so <clears throat> recognizing, understanding, and appreciation. Again, I'm not going to read the whole part of it. All we want to do is want to recognize the behavior style that we have. We want to recognize the behavior style the other person has. We want to understand what that behavior style is and then appreciate the differences because they have a role to play. It's not about right and wrong. It's not about who is better than other. No, that's not what it is about. What it is about is you appreciate the role the other person can play and help you create a winning team. Okay, that is very important. So now let's talk about Success Insights Wheel, which you might have seen at the end of the uh, report. And you can see the D, I, S, C on your screen. So D is on the right up, uh, quadrant on the top, then I below that, and S and then C. And you look at the wheel where the person's graph is placed, which is the natural and adaptive style, graph one and graph two that we saw before. And looking at the position where their graph is, we try to understand what their behavior style would be. So let us, for example, look at conductor D, right? So that is the adaptive style of this individual. What would that person be like? Competitive, confrontational, direct results oriented, sense of urgency, and change agent. Now if you look at the natural style, it falls in the area called promoter, which means they have high trust level with people, not fearful of change, contactability, rather talk than listen, verbal skills, and project self-confidence. So you can look at the position of the natural and adapted style 
on your own report as well as the report of the people who work with you and use this information to be very specific on how to work with that individual. Okay, so for example, compliance person on the left, analyzer, is precise, accurate, concerned for quality, critical listener, nonverbal communicator, attention to detail, and so on. So again, this is a great piece of information for you to use when you look at the report, the success insights wheel for your own colleagues, people who report with you. Okay? Now, <clears throat> as you keep building on this, this is the other one which we have. So there are two different people here now. A, the number is 10, where the conductor. B is supporter. So you can imagine the conductor is competitive, confrontational, direct, resource-oriented, sense of urgency, and change agent. Whereas B, which is an S, which is supporter, accommodating, dislike, confrontation, persistence, controls emotion, adaptable, and good listeners. So they are half of it. <coughs> so they would be confrontational, or they would not get along easily if they don't learn each other's behavior style. Hang on for a second. So I'm sure you can see that there are some challenges. What we need to do is learn and appreciate about the other person. So let's go there. So what are, what are the words which don't work for people who are a D, which is in this case would be the conductor. They don't like frequent interruption. Okay. So follow directions in my opinion. Okay. So they don't like those words. Okay. Then the steadiness, the person B, supporter. They don't like substantial change, innovative, play to win, because they are looking for less confrontation and get along. So playing to win, competing is the opposite of their behavior style. And that's why having these two people work together means there has to be a lot of communication, a lot of understanding, good appreciation for each other's role, so it can be a winning team. And that's why these find it hard to work with S's quite often. So let's talk about the people reading process here. Okay. Now what I want to do here is give you a very quick understanding of what this actually is. As you can see, if the profile is between B and a C, so that's a C here more often, task oriented, cool, distant, precise about use of time, thinking and creative. A D, fast acting, high risk, direct, extroverted, task to people, logical. Between S and I here, you can see people-oriented, warm, close, imprecise about use of time, feelings. Then you have C and S are usually slow acting, low risk, more introverted, more inquiring, more sensing, more logical. So you can see, based on this page, you can find out what the person would be like. Now you might say, okay, Minesh, this is good on a report, this is good on a piece of paper here. How the heck do I actually find this out when I'm out and about with people? Great question. Let us answer that in a couple of slides there. So I want to make sure why we need uh, the behavior of this. Okay? So you want to remember that I needs to verbalize ideas. So they need to talk. Listen to them. These have a need for control. C want to follow real rules and procedures. And S they want everybody to accommodate and they will accommodate. They will accommodate with other people as well. So what are the emotions? And then we'll talk about how we actually go about working with these people a little bit more. So let's use colors here. So the D, the color is red. Anger, <laughs> okay? Their fear is being taken advantage of. So if they feel they're going to be out of control, they hate it. So you want to make sure that they feel totally in control. They're not going to be taken advantage of in that conversation. I is yellow, fun. Emotion is optimism. What they fear is social rejection. The opposite is they are looking for approval. S is steadiness. We are looking for the color green. They are not showing many emotions. And their fear is loss of security. Will it work? Will it not work? They have some sense of anxiety about that. Last but not least is compliance. Their color is here blue. Their emotion is fear or worry. And they don't like criticism of their work. They think they want to be perfectionist, and hence they don't like criticism of their work. Okay? Now what is the value of the team? Value to the team. 
you can see D wants results. C wants to make sure the plan works. S is in helping implement the plan. And I comes up with ideas, like all different kinds of ideas. So you need different people. You want somebody who's focused on results. You want somebody who is going to make a plan. You want somebody who is going to get people excited about implementing the plan. And somebody who is going to help you actually implement the plan. So do you see how four of these different styles can help you in organizing your team to get much better results. Okay, so let's do some quiz here to find out what kind of person is this. So I'm going to read the description and you can read it on the screen as well. Okay, and uh, we will go from there. And I'm still not sure if Mike has a question that has been answered yet. So I'm trying to figure that out. Okay, and you can talk to, I think I enabled you here, I think. So you can, I sent out a pin to you, Mike, if you want to talk. Okay, case three number one. Known for his loyalty to friends and as a team player. So immediately when you hear the word loyalty, team player, the person is steadiness. F, okay? Hard worker and a thorough researcher. Hmm, interesting. So that could be a C. Let's take a look more. Puts a premium on friendship, sometimes to a fault. A man at peace with himself, relates easily and warmly in small groups, but freezes in public forums which basically means he is more introverted than extroverted. D and I are extroverted, whereas C and S are more introverted. Top achiever who is cool under pressure. Family is sacred. Shortcoming may be his inability to act quickly to an unexpected turn of events. So the primary tendency would be S, and secondary tendency would be C. Let's do the other quiz. Case study number two. This person is motivated to be amiable, easygoing, and relaxed, is a natural team player, and enthusiastic. Okay? So, depends on extroverted or introverted. This could be an I or an S. Let's take a look. Likes to get results through others. Very interesting. So, that is more extroverted. May make some decisions without gathering all the facts necessary. That sounds more like an in I, influence usually very optimistic, may be seen as unrealistic. Dislikes conflict. Comfortable talking with all types of people, may tend to judge others by their verbal skills. Shortcoming may be lack of time control and his natural tendency to trust others, may cause him to trust the wrong people. <coughs> Sorry. Primary tendency is I, secondary is S. Okay. So case study number three, and I will leave this for you to actually join me and give me an answer here, okay? So, uh, okay, so send me the answer for the third one, okay? Okay, so let me do that, okay? Let's read it out. Case study number three, highly competitive and somewhat egotistical. He's always looking for a new challenge. High energy level may keep many co-workers frustrated trying to keep up. True visionary in his thinking, always looking at the big picture. Well informed on many subjects, can talk spontaneously on almost anything and has an opinion on everything. Is seen as a risk taker and charismatic, especially where women are concerned. Has very private side to his personality that few people see and therefore requires a special place where he can be alone to think periodically. Shortcoming maybe is inability to sustain energy for project completion after the challenge has been conquered. Anybody wants to uh, text me or send me an answer here? Okay. What do you think is the person who is competitive? D, I, S, or C? Anybody wants to guess? Let me see if you have an answer here. Let me wait for a second here to see if somebody has an answer for what that behavior style of competitive nature is. Okay? okay. I'm looking for an answer here. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Anybody? Anybody? DNI. Uh, so, DNI. Okay, good. Thank you for the answer. Is that uh, Mike or Carlos? Carlos. Okay. Okay, Carlos. Thank you. Well, 
Here is a part about I has very private side. Do eyes have a private side? Yes. No, they don't. Okay. So B would be correct, but it would not be an I. It would be a C. Okay. C. Because uh, yeah, so this person likes to be a B because somebody needs to not do not if you can be off the speaker phone I'll appreciate it. Uh, can you be yeah so I was that I muted just because the echo is a loud one when the uh, when there is speaker so the D is the primary tendency so let's take a look at C here why has very private side to his personality that few people see and therefore requires a special place where he can be alone to think periodically. Shortcoming may be his inability to sustain energy for project completion after the challenge has been conquered. So the private side makes it more of a C than even an F here. Okay? Okay, so that part I think is useful to know. So D is because the person is competitive and C is the private side to the person. Okay, thanks for jumping in. I appreciate that. That's what we are looking for. Let's look at case 34. Very empathetic and patient, a good listener. Okay, anybody guesses what that person would be? D, I, S, or C? Any guesses? <clears throat> a good listener is an S. Okay? A good listener is an S. Tremendously objective and unemotional, may not display a sense of urgency that others may feel is, un is necessary to win, can be rigid and may resist change, but very spontaneous, friendly in familiar social environment, prefers not to rock the boat and may conceal grievances to maintain harmony in the work team, adds stability to any work group, is consistent, dependable, and calm, remains calm under pressure. Okay, so definitely an S, I don't hear any in extroverted characteristics, so if there's a primary tendency is S, I would say the secondary tendency would be a C. Let's take a look at case study number five. Want to be seen not only as a team player but a leader as well. That's interesting, okay? Is gregarious and talkative, so that would mean an I. Wants freedom from restrictive time controls, again an I. But may sometimes let time get away from him. Always thinking of 50 different things at the same time needs social recognition and likes to collect mementos of important milestones in his career or remembrances of special people in his life. His shortcoming may be that of going in too many different directions and not taking time to focus and set priorities. So mostly an I and because I don't really see that uh, there is the other uh, secondary tendency, I would leave it at I, if there is one that might be a little bit of a D. Case study number six, likes to do things his way, needs structure and control, doesn't like surprises. That would be an S or a C sometimes, okay? But we will see where it goes. Therefore, we develop elaborate plans to prevent them. Planning is a C, compliance. May be seen as cool and aloof by others. Again, compliant, C, because of his private nature can be overly critical of himself and others. Again, looking for perfection. May have difficulty developing a sense of team cohesiveness. That happens. Is pragmatic but may resist change unless given reasons. Under pressure may become overly autocratic. Can be very intuitive but may not know how to express feelings. May become possessive of people he lets inside his wall. So the primary tendency is going to be C. And if there is anything else, it could be an S just because I don't see anything as being extroverted here. Okay? So that those are things which are easy to understand once you are paying attention to the person. Okay, so let's look at this page which is very critical. How do you recognize this? Let's look at, look at D. The tone of voice is strong, clear, confident, and fast-paced. Volume is loudest and forceful. Body language uses direct eye contact, points, fingers, leans toward you. So think of somebody in your work environment, and I'm sure you could find somebody who's a D. Let's talk about I influencing from one person, right? Tone of voice is animated, friendly, rambling explanations. Volume is fairly loud, casual. 
body language, smiles a lot, uses expressive gestures. So again, very easy to see this in people. Okay? You can see their faces lit up. That's pretty typically an eye. S is tone of voice low, warm, detail oriented, soft volume, methodical, small hand gestures, relaxed, non-emotional. C, a compliance is monotonous voice, precise, cool, aloof. Very deliberate in their approach, by the way. Volume, quiet volume, deliberate. Body language, very few, if any, hand gestures, direct eye contact, controlled. When you can recognize this in somebody else, you can immediately switch your style to fit their style, and they will develop a rapport with you, and this rapport will help you get your move communication across to them more effectively. Remember, the quality of communication determines the quality of your life. Quality of relationship determines the quality of life, and communication is part of relationship as well. Okay, so we are wrapping this up pretty shortly here. Again, understanding others. Let's take a look at recognizing, understanding, and appreciating, right? So understanding is, again, let's go to C here first, slow pace and confident. You want those for communicating what? Expect them to want a lot of information. Do respond logically. Don't, don't be too personal or informal. Don't get too close to them. Don't be disorganized. Similarly, with S, slower pace, warm. Do for communicating. Expect them to be calm and methodical. Do listen attentively. The don't, don't force a quick response. Don't interrupt them. Don't mistake their willingness to go along for satisfaction. B is very easy to recognize, rapid pace, limit emotion. Those for communicating, expect them to be blunt, be quick. Don't, uh, don't ramble on or chit chat, don't waste time, don't offer assurances you can't deliver. Voice of the eye is rapid and friendly. Those for communicating, expect them to show emotions, be empathetic. Don't, don't be curt or cold. I think the word T is missing here, less spelling, don't be curt or cold. Don't be too business-like, don't be impersonal or talk down to them. Again, you learn this by interacting with people and you will see that. So let's appreciate the differences, right? Recognize, understand, and appreciate. So D, ability to make decisions quickly. Willingness to take unpopular positions because they are willing to be confrontational. They can take risks. I is natural optimism, trusting of others, Ability to make others feel welcomed or included. Again, people such like this at events are very useful. S is tenacity for order. Natural ability to organize tasks, record keeping skills. So that is steadiness. Compliance is natural systems developers, good quality control people, willingness to dig for information. So they will research the information as well. So appreciating others. So now this activity to improve your awareness and understanding of others. So what tendencies do other people exhibit that you wish were easier for you to exhibit also? Okay, so if you like other people who are methodical and you are not, well, pay attention to that. So that does tell you about you as well as the other person, right? If you like somebody that who takes on the risk, you might want to learn about that. Okay, again, this is an exercise you can do with the people on your team. Look at their profile, talk to them, understand their profile, recognize it, and appreciate their profile as well. Again, this is not that difficult. These are looking for results. I are looking for attention to listening and some recognition. S are looking to be heard in terms of being part of a team, listener, service-oriented. Compliance are looking to get tasks done following rules and procedures. And that's really the key trust of all of that. It is something you might notice about the people when you're interacting with them. The D looks at the watch, leaning back in the chair, challenging or disagreeing with you. So if you notice this, you will need to change your style because they're not paying attention. I is looking around the office or room, skeptic, negative, which is the opposite of their normal style. S is asking you to repeat the information, trying to gently end the meeting. C, which is the compliance, they are being passive, almost no verbal communication, difficult questions, so you'll end the meeting. So when you are seeing these in your clients, referral partners, people you interact with, 
you want to pay attention and say, okay, I need to adapt my style to their style. And this is a great way to learn about what is not working and what you can do to change it. So again, <clears throat> you can look at the question of balance. And again, uh, if you are interested, I'll send you some information on this. But the bottom line is you want to recognize good news and bad news with people. Again, these very direct can be good or bad depending on the situation. Influencing likes to be in front of people, very talkative, may not be good at times, right? Steadiness, predictable, not wanting change, again, at times you may want somebody to change. Com compliance and competence, which is going together here, they have rules and expectations, maybe too perfectionist. So that may be a problem. They may doubt themselves. And that's why John Geyer here gives an example. Most weaknesses are often our strengths overused, and hence you want to make sure that your weaknesses, uh, that your strengths are not overused, and then they don't become a weakness for you. So if you're too bossy, it doesn't work. If you're too patient, it doesn't work. If you're too bubbly and too friendly and too talkative, it doesn't work. Okay? This is a communication exercise you can do with your clients and other people. To pick a person to communicate more effectively with John, I need to do the following. And you can look at their profile or pay attention to their voice, the way they move, the body language, etc., and find out that there's a D, I, S, or C. Now, why would you do it? Because there are benefits. The better you communicate, the more effectively you communicate, you have a way to get better results through that person. And that's a very useful tool to have in your uh, communication exercise too. Here's what we need to remember. People don't get up in the morning thinking about how they can make it a bad day for you. They just are who they are. And if you learn to know and adapt to their style, you will find that they are not looking to make a bad day for you. They just are looking to help you in that regard. So good. So I'm opening up for any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, so any comments you might have. Okay. I'm looking for that. Uh, anybody has anything they want to mention here? Hello. I'm just trying to get some clarity here if there's any comment you have. I know, uh, let me see, uh, Mike, if you enter your pin, you can actually be unmuted, okay? So I send the audio pin, and uh, uh, Carlos, you also have the audio pin, so you should be able to do that as well. So good, so I would like to hear any comments, any questions that you have about what we covered so far. Any quick comments? Okay? So. <clears throat> For more information, just call me, text me, email me. My name is Minesh Bakshi, 248-866-0063. I'm going to end the recording, but I'll keep it open in case somebody has a question or something they want to make a comment on. Okay. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed our program today. I thank you once for being on the call the webinar with me. I know you could have done anything else today, but you chose to be here with me, so I appreciate your time. And I'm looking forward to supporting you in growing your skills in communication. Thanks again. Bye-bye.